It's time for In Dialogue. The well-known host here is Sir Bharat Bhargav. Usually, Mr. Bhargav walks into our studio and says, Morning. Get ready, Aaron. Today, he says, Oops. Namaskar, I'm Bharat Bhargav. Thanks for joining In Dialogue. Our program today is entitled Oops. It's a memoir-based infotainment. At a recent event, I met a young lady in her 20s who had just come from India. I asked her, tell me, do you feel that everything you are seeing in the U.S. looks totally familiar to you? She said, bilkul uncle, har cheez jani pehchani lagti hai. Young people in India nowadays know so much about the U.S. and also so many things in India are similar to the U.S. now. Rewind to 1962. When I came, almost nothing seemed familiar. I made many goofs early on, and today I'd like to tell you about some of them. During my very first week, when I was teaching, I said a certain word, and one of the eager Beaver students asked me to repeat what I had said. I did, to which she said, Sir, can you please write it? As I was walking toward the board, one of the backbenchers sitting way up in the theater says, laboratory. She got it and said, ah. And I said to myself, gosh, the word I had said in my usual way was laboratory. And I knew I was in trouble. It was going to be pretty painful with my Indian pronunciations day after day. So right after the class, I went to the library and borrowed the NBC Handbook of Pronunciation. I must say, I discovered pronunciations in the handbook I didn't know existed. For example, I didn't know R-E-C-O-R-D was pronounced record as a noun and record as a verb. It gets worse. The letters S-U-P-E-R are pronounced four different ways. Super, superb, superficial, and superior. And listen to this. You would be more in line if you pronounce the word Monday as Monday here. Ah, the eager beaver student whom I mentioned, she was Phyllis Reynolds, who always sat in the front row in the center, and I could see she used shorthand to take her notes so she could capture every word during the lectures. On the flip side, this is how Phyllis wrote my name on a term paper. But that's also my problem. I discovered that almost none of the Hindi consonants in my first or last name exist in English. Huh. Before coming, I had never seen snowfall. So one day during the lecture, when I noticed snow beginning to fall outside, I said to the class, I'd like to go outside and enjoy seeing the snowfall. So class dismissed. All right, so you might say, that's not an oops. It sounds more like a woohoo. Okay, in that case, consider this. Yog and I had rented an apartment very near the university. It was a two-story building with our apartment on the second floor, and the six rooms on the first floor had been rented to single students. During a day of heavy snowfall, I was so proud having walked all the way to the apartment building without wearing any boots. The next day, I did wear boots, but when I returned, the main door of the building was locked and there was a sign outside, no entry. Here I was, out in the cold and no entry. I rang the doorbell two or three times, after which one of the students opened the door and said, Sir, please take the snow off, your, off of your boots before walking in. Only then I, it became clear to me that the previous day, ever so blithely, I had walked the entire hallway and up the stairs, dropping snow all over, which the landlady, Mrs. Vinro, had to clean. She was the one who had put the sign outside, no entry, when she saw me arriving. Ah, at the end of the academic year came the time for commencement. As is common, the faculty members put on gowns and hats and entered after all the graduating classes had been seated. In the processional, a tall female professor was in front of me, and we sat in the front rows as we were reaching there. 
Upon sitting down, I noticed that the lady professor sitting on my left had her hat on. So did I. But the gentleman sitting on my right did not. Out of corner of my eye, looked beyond and noticed none of the men did. Turning my head toward the processional gently, I noticed with a sinking feeling that all the male professors were taking their hats off as they were entering. I also took my hat off swiftly, but after everybody had seen me, the only man walking the entire aisle and sitting in front with his hat on. On the first day of another job, my new boss, Bela Prigley, asked me to verify analytical calculations done by someone else before because their accuracy was important to the, organizations, to the organization. In those days, we used to use those huge mechanical calculators in which you would punch the numbers and then press the bar at the bottom for calculations to take place. Because there were a large number of calculations to verify, I figured out that if I punched the numbers with my right hand and press the bar with my left, I could go much, go much faster. In an hour or two, I got all of the members, numbers checked out. <laughs> Only a month or so later, when my boss and I became real buddies, he told me, laughing very hard about it, that he was very busy the day I started working, and he had given me those calculations, figuring that will keep me busy for the rest of the day. Oh, one time, I bought something at a small store, and after that, as I was driving away within a few blocks, I realized that the cashier had given me $2 too many. First, I thought of returning, and then I said, eh, I'm not going back. It's lousy $2. Mind you, I was in no hurry to get anywhere, and the cost of gasoline was not even a consideration. It cost 17 cents a gallon back then. So a little later, I parked to go to another store. I come out and find a $2 ticket on my windshield. The law of karma, you may say, maybe, maybe not. So also consider this. I bought groceries from a store, and instead of placing the cart in the proper place, I just, in a hurry, left it on those yellow stripes about 10, 15 feet from my car and proceeded to drive. The cart rolled back and hit my own car. Ah, law of karma again? I don't know. It may be, but coupled with the law of gravity. On my first day when I started MBA, it took the students quite a while to find their classrooms. So I was late reaching my first class, Aldrich Hall, room 106. I opened the door, and seeing that the class had already started, I quickly grabbed the empty seat nearest to the door. Right away, the professor, Professor Robert Austin, yelled at me, shut the door. That startled me. With the first day commotion outside, I know it was noisy, but why such a big deal? Of course, I swiftly got up and closed the door. Within 10 seconds, another student walked in and also left the door open. The professor screamed even louder, shut the door. When the class ended, somebody told me that I was the third person who had walked in after the class had started and left the door ajar. And the professor had gotten louder and louder each time someone entered, as though the same person kept coming in and leaving the door open over and over. You know how case studies are? The students are supposed to participate in case discussions. I also did. But after first week, our marketing professor, Ralph Sultan, stopped recognizing me when I raised my hand. After a couple of classes went like that, I asked him about it. He said, these cases are for analytical purposes, not to find some complete solution, and told me that every time I was recognized, I not only comment on the issue at hand, but also on the situation that was discussed and done before. I never did that bad thing again. Oh, with chagrin, I have to tell you, I did used to smoke cigarette once in a while. Then I noticed even young people here smoked cigarettes and some smoked pipes. 
I quickly do some, uh, did some MBA type math and figured that while there was some initial capital investment in buying a pipe, the operating cost would be less than that of cigarettes. So I bought one. Soon after I found out that the pipe smokers have a lot of pipes and talking about their collections is their favorite pastime, so I also ended up getting stuck with a number of pipes. So much for my clever economics. A tiny disclosure before I go any further. The anecdotes I share on my memoirs-based shows are by definition factual, word for word. But the ones I will tell you now are kind of combinations of facts and some mirch masala. The next story is not about me, but a friend of ours. This couple had recently come from India. They told me that on February 28, they saw a big newspaper ad for pre-leap year day sale that included ketchup bottles. They loved ketchup and figuring leap year comes only once every four years, they bought 24 bottles of ketchup. The next day, they saw an ad for leap year day sale with bottles even cheaper by a couple of cents. Ha, huh, understandable, they said. This is the main day and bought 24 more bottles. The next day they caught on when much to their dismay, they saw an ad for post leap year day sale. The next story used to be known during our early days here. When a person from India first came and wanted to drink tea, he was given a tea bag which he proceeded to tear open. He was told that you drop the tea bag in hot water as is. But by the time he was given the sugar package, he was well informed and proceeded to, you know where I'm going with that. Finally, let me close with a current situation related with my own TV program. It started out as oops, then turned into golly gee, and finally to ouch. Okay, so less than 15 minutes ago, you heard Neely Maji make an introduction to this dialogue episode. I also hear such introductions for the first time, the same time you do. The way it works here is that each of us peons, meaning the hosts of various segments, get the episodes taped before and go home. Then Neely Maji rolls in in her executive producer mobile, she checks out each of these segments and grades them as uh, not horrible, kamsi kamsa, or yuck, and then proceeds to get her introductions taped. When I heard her fancy introduction to my first episode, I went, oops, thinking she must have made a mistake. This would have been probably introduction for some other segment. Later, I was told she did mean it for me and in dialogue, and I went, golly gee. Over time, though, I found out what the viewers have figured out long time ago, that she makes the introductions increasingly flowery in proportion to the deficiencies in the segment to camouflage them. That hurts. Oops. मुझको राणा जी माफ करना